This is the application of finding partial molar volumes and the application of the partial molar volumes. So what are the partial molar volumes? For example, I have the water and ethanol mixture. The water, I say that's component one, the ethanol component uh, two. And when you mix together, you will get the total volume called V. The partial molar volume of water is defined as change of the volume, total volume, per change of the number of moles of the water when we are holding the uh, when we are holding the ethanol moles uh, constant and this one I call the partial molar volume of one put a bar there that means per moles of the water same definition I want to say the partial molar volume of the ethanol and I use this symbol V2 bar equals to change of the volume per change of the ethanol moles when holding the number of moles of the water constant. A very important properties of the partial molar volume is its additivity. And showing in equation is that if V is the total volume, then V equals to N1, number of moles of the water, multiplied by the V1 bar, that is the partial molar volume of the water plus N2 number of moles of the ethanol multiplied by the partial molar volumes of the ethanol. So what is a V1 bar and V2 bar? V1 bar equals different partial differentiation of the volume against N1 holding the number of moles of the ethanol constant. Same thing with a V2 bar equals to L of V partial differentiation of V against N2 when holding the number of moles of the water constant. Let us prove this relation. Well, to start with, recognize V is an extensive property. So V for the binary component, V consists of the N1 and N2. Suppose each component we multiply by the lambda times we multiply by the lambda times then because this is a extensive properties then the total volume will be multiplied by the lambda times of the V N1 and two. So this one said that if V is made of two components, N1 and N2, each component the number of moles multiplied by lambda times lambda N1, lambda N2, then the whole volume is multiplied by the lambda times. And because this is an extensive properties. Now I'm going to differentiate lambda, differentiate both sides with lambda. 
So let's find out what's going on. On the left hand side, differential against lambda, lambda. First, we have the partial differentiation of v against lambda n1, and then d lambda n1 d lambda plus partial differentiation of the v against lambda n2 and then d lambda n2 d lambda Differentiation of the right hand side by lambda is simply because becomes v n1 n2. Let us further simplify the last equation. Uh, d lambda n1 over d lambda is simply n1. So this is this term is n1, and this term is simply n2. So I would have n1 theta v theta lambda n1 plus n2 theta v theta lambda n2 equals v n1 n2. This equation holds for every lambda. So we can assume lambda equals to 1. Then we can have the relationship is n1 theta v theta n1 n2 plus n2 theta v theta n2 n1 equals v n1 n2. The last equation is simply the same as this one we showed at the very beginning of the slides. Your project starts with this Excel spreadsheet with nine components, nine solutions. Each solution is made of ethanol and water. And you also have a density, which has the units of gram per cubic centimeters. What you need to do is that you're going to create a column that's added up the gram of water plus gram of ethanol. So you're going to create a total mass. Then the the total mass divided by by the density that will give you the volume. So the column E and column F is what we did. Column E is the total mass. Total mass. Column F is the total volume. On top of that, we also have column G and column H. Column G is the number of moles of the water. So the N1 equals gram of water divided by molar mass 
of the water, which is 18 grams per mole. Column H is number of moles of the ethanol, that is gram of ethanol, divided by 46 gram per mole because ethanol uh, molar mass is 46 per mole. To find out partial molar volume of the water, everything has to be normalized. That means the volume here, we need to normalize with the ethanol and also number of moles of the water has to be normalized with number of moles of the ethanol. So we do need to create a column of this one, a column of this one, and then from there we can calculate the partial molar volume of water. And this is how you do it. You take data V over N2 divided by data N1 over N2 and you will come out with data V data N1 holding constant of N2. So column G, column I is everything uh, normalized with the N2 with the total volume. Column J is what we did it, the number of moles of the water is normalized with number of moles of the ethanol. Column K is simply change of the V over N2 over change of the N1 over N2. And this would be the partial molar volume of the water. So how do we calculate change of the V N2? Well, take the first two rows. The first row is 468.2693. The second row is 237.6098. So this is simply 237.6098. Minus 468.2693. Similarly, change of the N1 per N2 simply equals to 10.2193. Minus 22.94951. When you divide it by data, data V over N2 divided by data N1 over N2, you simply get a number. 18.1086. You can follow the same procedure. You can get a column K, except the last value, the last value, the last value is out of whack, 221.33. And the last value is and out a liar. So when you report partial molar volume of the water, uh, 
I would currently take out that volume because that is not not uh, in a real case. Now you know how to calculate the partial molar volume of the edema. In this case, everything is normalized with the number of moles of the water. And again, this value is also an outlier. You also need to create two columns. I call them more fraction of the water and more fraction of the ethanol. Now what is the more fraction of the water? X1 equals to number of moles of the water divided by the number of moles of the water plus number of moles of the ethanol. The mole fraction of the ethanol is N2 divided by N1 plus N2. And mole fraction of the ethanol is simply equals to 1 minus x1. Now you can tabulate the x1 versus partial molar volume of the water and partial molar of the ethanol. And you can plot it out in this plot. Everything plots against more fraction of the water. So the water is down there among 18, 18, 18 uh, volume. Uh, the ethanol is on the top, and from there you can get a regression equation. Finally, we are going to check it out the additivity uh, theory. Column A is what we originally have, the total volume. That is the total mass of the solution divided by density. Column F comes from N1 V1 bar plus N2 V2 bar. And you can find it out that is column F. And the column F value compared to the column A value and they are exactly the same. Important applications of the additivity principle is that all the thermodynamic properties are additive. For example, if I want to know the enthalpy change of AA plus BB becomes CC plus DD, the heat of reaction is C moles multiplied by the heat of formation of C plus D moles heat of formation of D minus A moles heat of formation of A minus B heat of formation of B. This property works not only for enthalpy but also for Gibbs free energy works for the entropy. And we can do that because they all follow the same kind of the principle we learned from the exercise of the partial molar volume.